Wellington Northwest City Politics in the know with Juanita. We're glad that you're joining us again this evening for our show. We're always happy for people like you, people that are interested in the issues that are happening in the cities and CCX's viewing area. It is important for good government that there be a good flow of information back and forth between city councils and the mayors, city councils and the staff, but also city councils and the residents. So we're glad that you're interested in what's happening. But now we are in the middle of election season, getting a little bit closer to the end. So we've been bringing on candidates for city council and candidates for mayor in eight of our nine cities, because eight of them have elections this year. And we're bringing people to you so that you can get to know them a little bit better. We'll have people on from several city councils tonight, and we encourage you, if it's from your city, that you take down their name, their phone number, their email, and if any of the issues that we talk about tonight resonate with you and you think, oh, I've got ideas on that issue, be sure to contact them. I know they'll be happy to hear from you. Now, tonight we're going to have several people on. We've got Dan Ryan from Brooklyn Center, Christian Erickson from Brooklyn Park, and Sloan Walgren from Osseo. So we're happy to invite all of you to our program, and we're glad that you're taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us. We're going to ask all of you to share some thoughts and ideas with our audience out there, but especially directed to the people from your city. And I'll start first with Dan Ryan, and I have you kind of introduce yourself to the people out there. Tell them a little bit about yourself and then how you think that prepares you to be on your city council. Well, Anita, I want to thank you for uh, having me on the program. Oh, so you're it's welcome. It's good to, uh, to be here. Uh, I'm Dan Ryan. I served on the Brooklyn Center City Council since 2007, and I'm running for re-election. I grew up in Brooklyn Center. It's my hometown. I've been a resident there for over 40 years. I attended Earl Brown Elementary and graduated from Brooklyn Center High School. I left the city during my college years, but I moved back in 1991 when my wife Nora and I bought our home. Been there since. And my personal history, I say, is linked with uh, the growth and evolution of Brooklyn Center. Ah, yeah. So I understand the challenges we face. Right. Uh, I graduated from the University of Minnesota with a degree in political science. And as a student ah. intern, uh, I worked at the Minneapolis Housing Redevelopment Authority, oh, oh. now the Community Development Agency. Uh -huh. And when I worked there at the HRA for Minneapolis, I participated in as an intern uh, uh, with the uh, redevelopment project uh, of Hennepin and Lake. It uh -huh. uh, goes back quite a few years, but uh, it was right. a great learning experience. And it gave me the, uh, the valuable experience of how uh, pri uh, public-private partnership uh, how a government can work with the private sector. Oh, right. Um, I was a materials manager before retiring in 2011. Uh, I have uh, had varied work experience, but one of the uh, most important lessons I learned in oh, my years of work is uh, customer service, ah. which uh, uh, has uh, been invaluable uh, in my uh, work with the city council. Uh, I was, as a young man, I was a blue collar worker. So um, oh. I can relate to the uh, struggles uh, of the uh, working men and women whom I represent. Uh, and I would say that uh, that combination of uh, life experience, uh, my working life, and uh, my education has prepared me well for service with the city council. Oh, great. And I've served three terms, so uh -huh. uh, I've uh, learned how local government works. Yeah, you've got a good long history with your city, right? Yes. Well, and then I gave people a number of ideas that they might want to talk about or, or any in particular issue that's important to them. So why don't you just take one of the issues that you'd like to talk about and tell our people out in Brooklyn Center about it. Well, thanks, Anita. I, and everybody else can listen in, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I needed to bring some notes along because oh, uh, this sure. has been such an extraordinary construction season in Brooklyn Center. Oh, yes. And by my uh, count, uh, there have been 10 uh, redevelopment projects uh, either now underway or, or recently completed uh, this year. Uh, wow. Topgolf and the new Tim Hortons oh, and right. the Sprint phone store uh, just opened. 
Uh, uh, other projects, uh, there's the home furniture, uh -huh. repurposing the old Kohl's furniture oh, store. Great. And right next door to uh, home furniture uh, is the uh, new branch for Bank of America under uh -huh. construction. Uh, across Highway 100 at 57th and Logan is the Ebert construction uh, uh, four-story commercial oh. interior storage uh -huh. facility. It will not be an uh, outside storage. Right. Uh, there was some concern about that. It's not going to look like a, a U-Haul okay. rental, <laughs> but we've imposed quite high architectural standards. Ah. It'll be an attractive and high-valued building, and it will uh, work, fit very well uh -huh. on that site. Then, uh, in adjacent to the Earl Brown Heritage Center, the old Earl Brown right. Farm, uh, we have the uh, Earl Brown Terrace Luxury Apartments are under construction, and the Fairfield Inn, which will be across the drive from uh -huh. the existing Embassy Suites Hotel. Uh -huh. Then Metronics is undergoing a, a major production facility expansion. Oh. Uh, and there's the new Casey's Gas Station. Uh -huh. The EDA recently approved uh, the site plan. Uh, we're waiting for that uh, to be constructed. Another project that we're very excited about is the new Luther Mazda Mitsubishi oh, dealership right, right. Uh, that is under construction on 68th Avenue behind the existing uh, Luther Buick GMC and uh, Luther Chevrolet. Uh, where I think that that uh, highlights the uh, great advantage that Brooklyn Center has for redevelopment because of both the combination of our location and being there uh, right on the 694 and right. uh, uh, the Opportunity Site, uh, at, uh, which is the old uh, Brookdale Ford uh, Pepoy site, oh, right, 35 acres. Right. We've signed a preliminary development oh. agreement with Alitus, a major developer. Alitus has done uh, serious developments uh, in the hundreds, in the hundred million dollar range in, uh -huh. in Minneapolis, and they also won the contract for the old Army ammunition site in Arden oh. Hills. So they are a major developer, major player, and we're really excited to hear what they will bring uh, in terms of a development proposal. Again, it will involve uh, additional public engagement. Right. We'd like to hear what uh, the folks in the city, uh, what their uh, desires and expectations are as well. So yeah, there's a lot of work that goes on before you get to the visual process, the visual building itself, right? Right. And of course, some folks are unaware of the fact that the city doesn't actually build anything. It has to right. be done. Uh, by private developers, it's market driven. Right. I see that our time is getting a little short. I want to leave you plenty of time to tell the voters in Brooklyn Center why they should check your name on November 6th. I'm running for re-election to the Brooklyn Center City Council because I want to continue serving our community. I have the most knowledge and experience of the candidates for City Council. Having served 12 years in that capacity, I know how local government works, how, can, how it can and should operate. The city has achieved notable success in meeting our toughest challenges, recovering from the foreclosure crisis, public safety, and redevelopment. And we have a new operation called Brooklink, where we partner with local businesses right. to get our kids coming out of high school their first job or internship, helping them become competitive in the job market of the 21st century. The next four years offer us the opportunity for transformative growth and renewal. But we must have experienced and knowledgeable leaders on the City Council, leaders capable of setting the right priorities and meeting the challenges ahead. I believe I'm the best qualified candidate for City Council, so I'm asking you, my fellow citizens, for your vote November 6th. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll move on to Christian Erickson from Brooklyn Park and let you introduce yourself out to our wider audience but focusing on people in Brooklyn Park. And what section are you from? Or um, I'm running in the Central District. Central dis uh, Districts. Yep. Some have wards, some have districts. Central District people, yep. pay attention. Thank you. Um, so I'm a lifelong resident of Brooklyn Park. Um, my mom grew up in Brooklyn Center, went to Osseo High School. Mm -hmm. um, so my roots run pretty deep in this area. Right. I did uh, leave for 10 years to live mm -hmm. in Chicago, uh, where I met my wife and we had our wow. first two children. 
Uh, but it was time for us to buy our own home. Mm -hmm. uh, the first place we looked was Brooklyn Park. Ah. And my wife was as committed to that as I was. And so there we are now. Um, so there's three generations of my family still ah. in Brooklyn Park. My parents still live in the home I grew up in. Uh, my kids are going to school and using the parks and, and um, other services in the city. So um, I have a really vested interest in making sure that Brooklyn Park's um, successful and a long experience and, too. And I've seen a, a lot of the history and right. Um, so, uh, yep, I I lived in Brooklyn Park when I went to college. Um, I studied uh, international relations and diplomacy ah. at the University of Minnesota, um, and then ended up working for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America ah. in global mission. And so. Uh, Cross-cultural competency was a big value oh, working for that organization, right, right. which I think will serve me well in a city as diverse as mm -hmm. Brooklyn Park. Um, I then uh, came back to Minnesota and did a master's degree in marriage and family therapy. Ah. Um, so what finally brought me to the idea of running was watching okay. some sort of unhealthy relationships ah. between certain city council members right. and how that that played out in the life of the city workforce and and um, um, just relational patterns. Right. And I thought, you know, maybe Brooklyn Park could use a family therapist. Aha. Uh -huh. And so um, some friends encouraged me to uh, enter the race this year. Oh, ah, very good. Um, for the seat that Rich Gates is vacating. Um, so I'm excited about that opportunity uh -huh. and uh, looking forward to to serve the city of Brooklyn Park and experience the city of Brooklyn Park in a new way. Sounds like a good fit. Now, can you uh, pick one issue that we could start letting people in Brooklyn Park know about where you're coming from and what you'd like to see happen? Sure. Um, I thought of several things tonight. Um, one of which was uh, there's been a lot of energy expended by the city in developing the 610 corridor, right? which has been important. It's brought a lot of um, great jobs and mm -hmm. other developments to the city. Um, but eventually, that empty land will run out and right. we need to be thinking about what happens next. Uh -huh. And I've heard several people say that initial development is always easier than redevelopment. Uh -huh. But I think, um, as an example, some of the things that Dan just shared, right. it's, it's not impossible. No. And um, that, that with the proper investment of energy and ideas and um, private public partnerships and getting to know the market and oh yes um, that the southern part of Brooklyn Park could experience some of that ah. um, some of that growth and change that we're seeing on the 610 corridor so I would really like to see yeah Brooklyn Park needs both development and redevelopment, and redevelopment right? yep it's sort of unique in that it started being developed in the in the 50s and that right. there's still yeah. there's still empty farmland right that's that's pretty unique for a suburb it is at this point in at time, At this point right? in time, yep. yep. Is there another issue um, that's important to you? Um, I just, I mentioned briefly in my introduction about cross-cultural competence. Uh -huh. And I've seen, I've been serving on the Human Rights Commission for a couple of years now and um, have noticed, um, so there, there's certain relationships that take place on a city council between right. council members. But then those relationships carry over with the city staff, with residents between the city staff and residents, mm -hmm. and as residents interact with each other. Right. And um, I like to believe that people are generally people of goodwill. Right. But that conflict happens when we don't understand each other. Ah. And um, so as I watch neighbors interact together, mm -hmm. um, often that comes up. I don't understand what my neighbor is doing. Ah. So I'm going to call the police. Right. And the police might come. Maybe they understand what the neighbors are doing. Maybe ah. they don't. Um, and there are um, issues of trust between some communities and the government, oh, sure. especially at the police department. And so I feel like the city needs to really invest in helping bridge those cultural and ah. historical gaps. And um, there's certain communities and city government that need help from all of the residents bridging those right. gaps. And I feel like that's a worthwhile investment of energy. Oh, definitely. And. We've got a little bit of time for another issue. Sure. Um, and I have kids um, growing up in Brooklyn Park, and uh, they have used um, park resources. They've done um, 
school break programs oh, at the park sure. district. Um, they've done um, events uh, that have been facilitated by, by local churches. Um, and our city really has a lot of programs available for youth, and I think we can expand on those. And again, um, Councilman Brian mentioned the, the Brooklink. Um, it's a cooperative program between oh, Brooklyn right, Park and Brooklyn right. Center. And um, so further expanding on that, um, uh, the labor unions have been very interested in uh -huh. local races of late, and perhaps uh -huh. they, could, they could help build and grow that program. Oh, sure. And um, so there's, I think, plenty of, of avenues to explore related to how our youth can be um, formed and as they grow up in the city. Well, and the cooperation between the two cities, mm -hmm. because students going to school don't differentiate whether it's Brooklyn no. Park or Brooklyn Center. So having that cooperation and working on it together yeah. seems like a good idea. Mm -hmm. I drive across the border every day yeah. on my way to work. And they're really, I mean, I think, I think the futures of the three cities represented here are really linked together oh, closely. Oh, right. Yeah, I think they are. And then why should people vote for you? on November 6th in Brooklyn Park, and you're in the Central District, right? I am in the Central District, So we're yep. focusing it out to Central District people. Okay, uh -huh. um, so Central District folks, um, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to run and for the opportunity to be considered. Um, I've noticed that, that many people view um, issues as, um, I have a solution, somebody else has a solution, and, and those are the solutions that are available. And um, I really believe that when people of, of goodwill, which I believe most people are, work together, that there's always third, fourth, fifth, and sixth options that can be considered. Um, as, I, as I look in a supermarket aisle, we have 100 choices for breakfast cereal. <laughs> and that's because we're varied people of varied interests, and we have creative ideas. And um, if we can have 100 varieties of cereal, I really think that we can have a variety of solutions to the problems and challenges and opportunities that are in front of us. And I'm committed to listening and learning to understand how people are understanding the issues in front of us. And um, I'm committing to you to be a listener for understanding. And I would appreciate your vote in November. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to Sloan Walgren. And you can start out by telling people a little bit about yourself and your background in the city, how that kind of works into your thoughts and reasons why you're running on for your city council. We'll focus it on people in Osseo. But well, other you. people can learn about it too. Well, thank you for having me tonight, Juanita. Oh. Like I said, my name is Sloan Walgren. I'm running for city council in Osseo. Um, I grew up in the wonderful town of Osseo. My wife and I choose to chose to relocate there uh, about 13 years ago to raise our family there. Ah. We're currently on our on our second house in ah. Osseo. We upgraded to a little bit larger house, just a couple ah. blocks away. Um, but after I, I attended Osseo High School, and after high school, ah. I went to the University of Minnesota, um, received my undergraduate and, bat and master's degree from the University of Minnesota in Park and Recreation Management. Ah. Um, it took me a l took me around to many cities in the metro area, uh -huh. Brooklyn Park, Maple Grove, um, recently Mendota Heights. And now currently I'm working for the Wyzetta School District oh. as their facilities manager. Um, throughout my role in my, my jobs and my, my education, um, it's really taught me um, a desire to serve people, uh -huh. help create a better quality of life for, for people in their communities, um, right. working on programs for youth and adults, also developing facilities and parks, just really making the best resources of um, people's tax dollars and giving them a reason to, to stay in their city when they're going to participate in um, recreational activities, social activities. Um, I currently don't have any issues with our city council. I think they've done a great job in, in recent years. Um, like I said, I, I, I enjoy to serve, and that really is what prodded me to run for city council this right. election season. Um, I think I will work hard for the for the residents of Osseo. We are we have that small town uh, friendly right. feeling, and that's right. what that, that's what is attracting many young families to choose to move to Osseo mm -hmm. um, to raise their families because they want that small town feeling, yet we're surrounded by these large cities like Maple Grove and Brooklyn Park who right. uh, offer wonder, wonderful things. And that's great. Um, now, Osseo, we can't compete with those two cities, so we shouldn't, we shouldn't try to, but we can offer many amenities for our residents that complement those things and keep, right. keep those services and businesses close, close to our homes. And then an issue that you'd like to share with our audience and Osseo people. 
Um, you know, one thing going while well, I've been campaigning, or people are concerned about their their taxes. We oh, all right. we all pay a lot of our hard-earned money right. um, for our property taxes, and people just want to see that their their dollars are being spent wisely and oh, efficiently. Right. Um, I think that it's it's very important that, like I said, we do we don't try to become a Brooklyn Park, we don't try to become a Maple Grove. We right. we are Osseo. We have to take ownership in that, take pride in that, and residents also have to know though that in order to keep our our city clean, safe, and beautiful, you know, it does cost money. Oh right. Um, we have a fabulous staff from administration to our public safety to our public works. Um, very small staff, but they're very qualified, uh -huh. um, very very personable. I think that that's really what people enjoy about our small town is that the police officers know everybody, they know everything, and um, when you call City Hall with an issue, people know where you live. Right. Um, they're very, very fast to respond to the issue, so that's that's good. That's good to know. But the, all those services I mentioned, they they do cost money, so we, right. we have to make sure we just watching every dollar very carefully that goes out. Yeah, and letting people know what they're getting back for their taxes, right? Correct. Is there another issue you would like to share? Um, maybe not an issue, but one thing that I have heard from people when I have been out campaigning is they're not really aware of some of the issues or uh -huh. things going on in our city. Right. And I don't necessarily think we have bad communication, uh -huh. but there's just always opportunity to improve the communication for, these, for the residents in the city. Uh, recently, we installed a brand new gateway sign on oh. County Road 81. It's wonderful for the city to advertise anything happening in the city as well as working with businesses, providing them the opportunity to advertise to the local traffic every day that's going up and down the road on County Road 81. We have a, a lot of people that way. There, there is. <laughs> there's a lot of people that use that, that road. Um, we have a quarterly newsletter that goes out to all of our residents in the city, which is a great resource to provide uh -huh. a lot of information. Um, but again, it only comes out quarterly, so there's a lot of things that need to get out to the residents in a timely manner. Right. And we have a great new website that the city has to to provide information to people, as well as Facebook, and I'm not sure if we have Twitter or not, but there's uh -huh. just a lot of, I just want to make sure that the, the residents of Osseo know what's happening in their city so their voices can be heard. They can contact um, city staff with right. issues, contact right. city council with issues, come to meetings and just and make their voices heard because you know, we work for them and we want to make sure that we're, we're representing them in the best best way possible. Yeah, I, I think that all of the cities are, to some extent, looking at different ways to reach out to people nowadays. And, and any other issues? Um, or, or, or things about the city? Things about the city. I, I currently serve on the Osseo Recreation Parks Commission. Uh -huh. um, one thing that I'm, I'm very adamant about is providing opportunities for our residents within our city. Uh, we do offer a lot of activities for seniors at our Osseo Senior Center. And we recently added a couple youth programs at our parks, which have really, um, have really exploded over the last couple of years. Uh -huh. um, great opportunities for our residents to participate with um, in athletic activities with their children at our parks. It's been great to see. Oh, right. um, I would really like to see our little Osseo Library be open more uh -huh. so that residents, um, working residents and residents that have families can, uh -huh. can make um, use of that facility. Currently, it's only open you know, during the, during the um, during the week nine to five, so it's very difficult for, for families with, with children or, or working families to, to make use of that resource. Oh, I'd, I'd really yeah. like to see that maybe the hours alter so we could make use of that on the weekends. Sure. And why should people in Osseo check your name off when they go to the voting booth? Oh, uh, this election on season? On November 6th. On November 6th. I keep reminding people of that. <laughs> I, I think people should vote for me this election season because I will work hard um, to make sure that their best interests are represented, not just for the current time, but also for the future, so that the city remains a wonderful family-friendly place for future generations of their family to live and to call home. I'll watch out for their, their money, their hard-earned money that they pay to the city, and I'll help just promote the city so that businesses will want to come to town uh -huh. and we can re retain the current businesses that we right. do have. Yeah, a lot of cities around the whole area are wanting to duplicate what Osseo looks like, right? Correct. So you've, you've got to start a uh, jump on that whole thing. But I think developing community feelings is important for all of our cities. And then I'll have each one of you think a little bit, what are you hearing from people when you're knocking on doors? Because that's one of the time-consuming but interesting parts of campaigning. So. 
we'll just maybe go down the line because it's easier. When you're knocking on doors, what are people telling you? I'm hearing a lot about just issues in the neighborhoods. Uh -huh. um, uh, nuisance issues. Uh, uh, we have an older housing stock, so uh, the city has given a lot of emphasis to uh -huh. uh, uh, supporting our community standards right. through code enforcement. And that actually has got, I've received a lot of positive uh -huh. feedback about that. Uh, the feeling is most of the, most all the pe folks I've spoken to on that matter uh, are of the opinion that uh, the city looks much better than it did uh -huh. when I began my service in 2007 in our neighborhoods. Right. The other issue I've heard a lot about is speeding. And ah. uh, I think it's a general societal problem about people not being conscientious, not being uh, attentive, and not right. uh, observing the traffic laws. Traffic down. We are looking at adding an additional police car ah. and uh, officer dedicated to uh, traffic control uh -huh. and uh, uh, to, to reduce the to reduce speeding. I was sort of warned when I started this process that uh -huh. the, the most frequent thing that I'd hear about is people complaining about property taxes, ah. and I, I have heard some of that. Uh -huh. It's true. Um, but I would say that I've actually heard more people when discussing ideas about um, if we had a such and such in one of our parks. Okay. I would gladly pay more taxes for that. Ah. Or um, I know that this thing is happening, like our fire department is understaffed. Oh, I would gladly pay more money for that. Ah. So I think if you. I mean, there are definitely some residents right. in Brooklyn Park for whom an additional tax burden is a problem. Oh, right. And um, I don't want to discount that mm -hmm. at all. But I think there's also things that we need to be a successful city. Oh, definitely. I think definitely. Sloan mentioned a few of those. Right. And um, I think if you can look people in the eye and share why this is a strategic investment for the city, right. that, that people will be amenable to investing um, in the long-term success of the place they live. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about, about in Osseo, what are you hearing from people? Uh, when I've been out talking to people in the community the last few weeks, one thing I'm hearing from them is you know, public safety is a, a big concern from people. We, are, we have had um, a, a small number of, of burglaries to, ah. to homes in the, in the past few weeks and months, right. and people are really concerned about that. And one thing that we're looking to do as a city is um, including a, another full-time officer in our budget for next ah. year which will really help um, combat some of those issues. Oh, and, and right. I think just make people feel at ease. Right. Um, you know, nobody likes to call 911, but when you do, you want to make sure that someone's there oh, well, uh, yeah. in a very timely manner. And I think that that's just, you can't really put a price on that. It's right. no. people's safety and their health. Yeah, an important issue, right, uh, that people feel comfortable in their dealing with that. Well, I want to thank all of you for coming, sharing your time and your ideas with our audience out there. And we hope those of you out there will be gathering information. So come November 6th, you can make an informed choice about who you want to elect to your city councils. Thank you for being with us, and we hope you'll join us again next week. Bye.